I am sitting here with Rick Vito. Hello, it's Ken Huss from Reverend Guitars coming to you not so live from sunny, beautiful Toledo, Ohio, where we are doing 12 questions today with one of our premier signature artists and the longest standing signature artist for Reverend Guitars. The, are you trying to say I'm older? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm just, really young at heart. Just more experienced. Is all That's true. more experienced in dealing with the ways of uh, myself and Mr. Naylor. Yes, Reverend uh, has come a long way, and we've come a long way together. Indeed. So, uh, you know, we've learned to understand each other. We have. Uh, we started off, of course, with the beautiful uh, slingshot with the high output P90s and the really cool That's graphics, right. the original Rick Vito signature model. There's a handful floating around out there in some uh, classic colors. Mm -hmm. uh, a very, very cool guitar. And then we did, of course, the Rick Vito Classic for many years, the Art Deco Masterpiece uh, in that beautiful Oceanside Green, but also other colors and variations slipped out there. That's right. Well, I pieces. think we have at yeah, least a half a dozen colors. Uh, yep. And then, of course, now we are making the Soul Shaker. And we're making this along with you to celebrate your new record, Soul Shaker. Yes, this was the year of the Soul Shaker with the new uh, Viztone CD. Um, and the new uh, Reverend Soul Shaker guitar, which is uh, quite a beauty, I think. It is. And we'll get to that. We'll get to that. But let's get these 12 questions out of the way. This is a funny question, because I've asked this question to, to, ma to many people sitting in this chair. I say, give me a brief history of your playing career. And a lot of the people that sat in that chair have been in like a band or two. Hmm. <laughs> how, how do I capsulize? Yeah, I don't even know where to go with this five years. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, basically, started off like everybody else, playing in in uh, at parties and and clubs and things like that. And I uh, Philly in the Philadelphia area. And uh, when I was in college, I met the group Delaney and Bonnie and friends. And they had had Eric Clapton and George Harrison playing with them. And I've heard of those guys. Yeah. Uh, good company. Yeah. So I knew all their material, and I loved the band, and I would go and introduce myself every time they'd come to town. Finally, they got used to me, and, and one night invited me to sit in with them, and I had a very good night because I knew all their stuff. I was pretty good on guitar, and I, you know. And uh, they encouraged me to move to Los Angeles. So I did that in 1971. When I got out there, I they hired me. That was my first gig, and from there I went on to play with... A ton of people, while all the while doing my own thing, of course, and uh, played with uh, uh, like uh, Little Richard, Screaming Jay Hawkins, Albert Collins, the blues guy. Then I got a great gig with John Mayall, and I traveled the world with John Mayall and uh, did about five uh, albums with him. That led to other gigs with people like um, Leon Russell and John Fogarty, Maria Maldar, Bonnie Raitt, many times. Uh, coming in and out of that gig. Jackson Brown, I finally got a great gig with Bob Seger as a result of playing the, uh, the solo on his song, Like a Rock, which he didn't even want slide guitar on. So that, that kind of morphed into a TV commercial years later and ran for yeah. 10 years, yeah, gave me a little bit of notoriety. And I eased out of that gig onto a, a membership in the band Fleetwood Mac for four years. And uh, of course, the, that that was probably the most notoriety I've gained in my career so far. And um, and then started a string of solo uh, CDs, and um, also played with the Mick Fleetwood Blues Band for about ten years. And this brings us up to the Soul Shaker years. And today, how was that? That was amazing. <laughs> so, what inspired you to first start playing guitar when you first picked it up? Two things. My mother had played the acoustic Hawaiian lap guitar. So we had, Neat. when she was a girl, she took lessons and stuff. She didn't continue to play it. Like a Oahu? A, a, exactly. It was an Oahu. Nailed it. So, and I used to <laughs> smell in the, in the hole, you know, it smelled so, so mysterious and alluring. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, I used to bang around in, in the house. And then rock and roll came in, Elvis and Ricky Nelson on TV with James Burton. 
that was it. I was hooked. I would never put the guitar down since. What was, so other than the Oahu, what was your first electric guitar? It was a Gibson 125 with the thick body and the P90 right here. Yeah. Fabulous guitar and a little uh, Alamo birch cabinet amp, which by today's standard would be an awesome sounding overdrive amp. Yeah. And uh, from there I went to a Gretsch twist guitar, but you've never seen one of those. Mm. It was like a Corvette, only it was bright red with this pick guard that had yeah. red and oh, white yeah. stripes. Well, I've seen those. Pennies. Oh. We, we see those at the guitar shows where every once in a while one of those will pop up at the Dallas show or whatever. Yes, I, I think cool. I might have to get another one of those sometime. Yeah. And then I got my first Telecaster and I was sold on Telecasters for years and years and years till I got a... Do you a still have any ball. of those? I do not. Uh, I'm... I've owned all, every guitar I've ever wanted. I'm so lucky in that area, but my downfall is that I've let most of them go. Uh, that, that's all right. There's, happens. There's, there's a right time to let them go. Yeah, I still have a few choice ones. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I believe you have, a, you have a 58 Les Paul. I do. Yeah, a real pretty one. Very pretty. Yeah. Um, so this is the hardest question in this whole thing. So I've found the easiest thing to do is to not think about it, just blurt it out. You ready? Mm -hmm. What are your top five favorite records? Oh, man. See, every time. <laughs> well, you know, like I have favorite artists, and so, that, so I'll pick some of their records. And, okay. and, you know, there's other records by the same artist that I probably like equally as well. But, you know, let's say um, 12 by 5, Rolling Stones. Um, Electric Ladyland, Jimi Hendrix, of course. Greatest Hits of Django, Ryan Hart. The Soul of B.B. King. And let's see, is that four? You want five. <laughs> <laughs> Told you it was a hard uh, one. Yeah, that is a hard one. Jeez. Uh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. I got all day. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> How about the first Taj Mahal album okay. with Jesse Ed Davis on guitar? Yeah, That's a good one. Um, and I can hear that in your slide playing. That's a you know that's, that's the, the very Stones cool. and Jesse Ed Davis was the first uh, slide guitar I ever heard. So okay. I wanted to. I didn't play sports in high school, and uh, so I would come home every day and I would put on records and I practice for two or three hours and learn every single lick from every record I owned. And that's how I learned to play. Uh, yeah, that's, that's how I learned to play many years later with music that probably wasn't as complicated. Mm. Well, you know, everything <laughs> you put is the relative. On and everything it's relative. Is relative. Yeah. Sure. Um, okay, so here's another hard one. Um, what's, if you could pick one, mm -hmm. what's the proudest moment of your playing career? Proudest moment of my playing career. Wow. There was there's one moment comes to mind. Uh, um, I don't know that I'd call it the proudest, but it was it was an amazing moment. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, I was in Fleetwood Mac, and we were playing Wembley, which is a huge outdoor arena. And at one point, I they had these massive. Uh, giant configurations of speakers for the PA on either side of the stage. And at one point in time, there was I had some extended solo thing that I did during the show. And I moved and I was standing sort of to the side, kind of in front of those that wall of speakers. And I looked out at that crowd. It was just, it seemed like there was 100,000 people out there. And there are these TV screens. And I'm up there and I see myself playing. And I go, I'm at Wembley playing in the group Fleetwood Mac, and there I am, and it's proof, and yeah. it was surreal, you know? Yeah. I mean, you just sit, those things don't happen to you. And uh, it was kind of an amazing moment that I've always remembered. That's amazing. Um, okay, how did you first hear about Red? How did you first hear about Joe? Okay, it was through a friend named Jeff Ross. He's a great guitar player out in LA. Certainly is, one of the original Helicasters. Yeah, yeah, he played with the Helicasters and uh, quite a few other yeah, monster. gigs. And when I met him, he was you know just a kid working in a car wash. But we've stayed uh, good friends all these years. And uh, I went to his house for some. He wanted to show me. Uh, I think he was playing a 
some kind of gypsy guitar or something. I went over his house, and uh, there in the corner was this beautiful black guitar with lipstick pickups on it. I said, what is that? He said, oh, that's a reverend. I said, let me see that. And I picked it up, plugged it in, and, whoa, this plays like butter, and it sounded great and everything. At the time, I was working with uh, Bonnie Raitt. So Jeff said, you know, you should probably contact Joe. He might want to have one of the Reverend guitars out on tour. I said, you know, that would be really good because we got this tour coming up, opening up for Eric Clapton in Europe. So uh, I called Joe, and he said, yeah, he sent me out the same guitar that Jeff had with the lipstick pickups, and I took it on tour. I found that um, although I loved that guitar with the lipstick pickups uh, at lower volumes and playing in you know small venues, on the big stage, I didn't love it as, quite as much. So uh, I sent it back to Joe, and he sent me a slingshot. And I loved that. And uh, so I would say from that point on, I've been hooked on uh, the Reverend guitars. And the P90s just gave it a little bit more growl. Yeah. A little more it, output, a little more, more presence. More output, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think it was an output thing. And the tone of those pickups uh, was just fantastic. And of course, the playability of the, of the guitar itself and the fact that there was a nice weight was uh, all very attractive. So. I think we've covered what you like about your reverence, and the next question is, of course, what reverence are you using now? But of course, you're using your soul shaker. Uh, you've been out on the road doing some stuff with Greg Koch, and uh, yes. you've got one of your old slingshots out on the road. I do, yeah. I think that's P90s. the first one that uh, that I ever had. Oh, the one we're talking about. Yes. Interesting. Yes, I've had that guitar since uh, for 20 years now, and it's just a just a particularly great resonating guitar, and uh, so yeah, I use that. Soul Shaker, the Rick Vito Classic, um, which are just wonderful for slide, too, because we, we wanted to try to uh, employ a little bit of that national guitar, electric mm -hmm. guitar sound from the 60s in it. So it's, uh, it's got a kind of a, a nice P90-ish flavor to it, which is uh, great for both finger style and slide. So as we went to the Soul Shaker model, we mm -hmm. went from the, the overwound single coils into a more traditional Alnico humbucker. And mm -hmm. I've been asked a couple times uh, what, your, uh, what your thought process was going, going to traditional humbuckers on this model. And was it just sort of that we've, we've covered the other things in the past and you wanted to try a little something like this? Or what, what, mm -hmm. what brought that on? Yeah, it's partly that. Okay. And uh, partly the first... Uh, um, Time Joe and Naylor and I got together to collaborate on a on an idea past the original. Um, you remember the the first Rick Vito signature guitar had it was sort of a slingshot with with images on it of yeah. skulls and and planets and things like that. But when we went to the classic, um, we sort of collaborated ideas and my ideas came from my original uh, Art Deco Streamliner guitar. And uh, that was a humbucking pickup guitar, it still is. And so I wanted to revisit that sound in the cool. new model. And uh, since we'd been in P90 land for many, many years, uh, it was time for a little bit of a switch. Uh, and what amps and pedals are you using live? Anything in particular? Well, <laughs> I uh, continue to use my Reverend, uh, my Reverend Kingsnake and Goblin, which are just, they're not made nowadays, but um, trust me, they are some unique, great amps. I've got a couple of vintage Fenders that I use, the 59 Baseman and the Deluxe Reverb. Um, and I, I like the newer Supro amps for some things. They really are nice. And uh, I have a, yeah, a Fuchs. Yeah, nice amps, for sure. A Fuchs. Yeah, a Fuchs for uh, the old, uh, what they call now the D sound which of course stands for Dumble. I used Dumble amps for years, and uh, yeah. so he makes a nice D amp. You had the, yeah, the Dumble, what's it called? I can't believe I'm blanking on it. Uh, I had the Overdrive, uh, special. Overdrive special. Yeah, that was the amp I used on Like a Rock with, uh, with a single coil P90 Gibson. And they, they, now legend has it that that amp had quite a history. It was originally built for Jackson Brown. And when I joined Jackson Brown, I played that guitar for two years. And when I left, he gave it to me. That's amazing. Yeah, I was, he's a very kind man. Oh, uh, so do you have any unusual skills or hobbies outside of the guitar playing world? Really? That you you want to know that? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I, I raise finches. No, I don't. 
I, I, like to, I like to design things. I've designed jackets, I've designed tables, I design guitars. I do a little uh, abstract painting in the inspired by Picasso mode. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, You and I both appreciate a fine hat. We yes. often discuss hats and when we're traveling together, we're, we often compare hats and talk about hat shops yes. in different cities and yeah. stuff. You, uh, I see, are wearing a flat cap I newsboy am. style. I am too. I'm uh, wearing my Stetson Strato liner. That's a yes. beautiful wide brim. Yeah, it's a yes. We like our hats. Uh, so before we let you go, do you have any advice for up and coming players? Well, yeah. Um, I think you have to, if you want to make your mark. First of all, you've got to spend a lot of time with the guitar, obviously. You've got to love what you're doing. You can never let it go. You have to keep going, 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 going. Never stop. And try to come up with something uh, that expresses yourself in a, some sort of unique way. And uh, because we all know there are the gamut of players that exist today, from, from the unbelievably fast shredders to you know, finger style, uh, nylon string guitar player. So you gotta find where you really fit in best. And don't try to compete, try to be yourself. I think that's the best advice I could give to you, to just, you know, slow down, figure out something that sounds like you, and stick with that. Fantastic. I think we should end with that. Okay. Because I think that was great. Thank you. I don't, I don't, thank you very much, Rick. Thanks My for pleasure. being here at the Circle R. Play a little something, take us out of here. Okay. Ha <laughs> ha.